when you develop good qualities in the mind, as when you meditate, you're developing mindfulness, alertness, concentration, discernment, learning to be more observant about what's going on in your mind, and giving yourself the strength you need in order to say no to any unskillful habits. You're providing yourself with really good protection. We often worry about external dangers, but the real dangers in life are the internal ones. I mean, the external one, In fact, the external ones are there. We tend to think about physical danger, but the most damaging thing people can do to you is give you weird ideas about how you can't train yourself, how you can't take charge of your life. Those are really dangerous ideas. People give up trying to do good. People give up trying to improve their thoughts and words and deeds. So you need a good external example, and then you also need to take that example and internalize it. In other words, develop good habits in the mind. You look at the Buddha, he was able to train himself, and then taught that training to others, so that they could train themselves and then benefit in the same way that he'd benefited from his own training. But even then, you're not totally safe. You're totally safe only when you reach this dimension where there is no change and there's no time. You're beyond time, beyond space. Because as long as you're just in time and space, then whatever good qualities you've had can deteriorate, they can decay. So as we're practicing, we're looking for three types of refuge. One, reliable guides from outside, and then two, good qualities inside, and finally following those qualities until it takes us to a place where we really are safe. And that way we provide protection to others. We are a good example to them. And in the course of our training, we don't do anything harmful. So we're not the only ones who get safety from our practice. Other people get safety from us. At the very least, they're, they're protected from our unskillful habits. We make our mind say, when we follow the precepts, we're not going to kill anything. Okay? Then all animals get protection from us. We're not going to steal anything. Anyone with any belongings gets protection from us. We may not be able to protect them from their own actions or from what other people might do, but really, at the very least, from this corner there is no danger. And that's quite a gift right there. So think of this as training the mind as providing protection, because otherwise where are you going to find your protection? You go running to this person, all they've got is guns. You go into running to that person, all they've got is strange ideas. You look inside, you've got all kinds of things going on in your mind that haven't been straightened out. So it's good to sit down and everything, just kind of every now and then just straighten things out. Ask yourself what you really believe and what you really do want to make with your life. And when it comes out of the quiet, it's a lot more reliable. So try to get the mind as still as you can, so you can see things clearly. Otherwise, we're running around and everything gets blurred. It's like paddling around in the water. You just stir up lots of waves. And you look down in the water, you can't see anything because you've been stirring up all the waves. If you let the boat sit still, after a while the, the water calms down, you look into the water and go, then you can see your face clearly. The same way, when the mind is still, it sees things inside and outside a lot more clearly, a lot more precision. So these are some of the benefits that come from training the mind.